I want you to sell my fingers as wind chimes. Take my thin bones for silverware. Use the hollow of my skull to serve your dinner. Paper your walls with my skin. Dust the windowsills with my eyelashes. Grind my teeth to powder and keep them in clear jars above the stove. Make music on my spine, sweep the floors with my hair. I would grow a garden for you. Shall Remain is an interdisciplinary, site-specific piece, and it's based on the story Gravestone of Wheat by Will Weaver. It's, it's a story that starts out with a man at his wife's funeral, and he ends up burying her in the wheat field and growing wheat over the place where her body was buried. The whole idea is to take that time period and what happens to the two main characters and develop music, choreography and theater uh, around that story. The Arts High School is for 11th and 12th graders for kids from all over the state of Minnesota. And they major in one of six art areas, dance, theater, music, media, literary arts, visual arts, and now an interdisciplinary art area. One of the great things about the program here at the Arts High School is it's really focused in on student-made work. We're not doing the 1,000th rendition of West Side Story. The students write plays, direct plays, act in plays. The, the dancers do not um, just look at the newest hip-hop moves of somebody else. They create their own. All of the students read the short story, and they actually worked with our literary arts teacher to look at it from like an English perspective, a language arts perspective, looking at themes um, and especially the rituals of daily life. We all had assignments to look at um, pictures from the era, like post-World War I, 20s, 30s era. So we really heavily studied that material. We read old letters, diary entries, We've been having a pouring rain, which I think will do an immense amount of good. The river was high, ready to spill over its banks. I had never seen such water. So we had this text, and then we had these visual images, and then literary arts and music and dance and theater all separated and started to create their own material. There was no like set choreographer, so we worked as a group and co-choreographed each piece. The first time that we actually read through the short story, uh, everybody was kind of just like, uh, what are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> yeah, so it, it was really difficult. So the lit teacher came down and helped us, you know, get the juices flowing. So then what we did as dancers, we started playing around with movement. It's supposed to be unison, because it's supposed to go one, one, boom, boom, one. OK, well, we can, what do you want it to be? Do you, you're, you're the choreographers. The moves are definitely like earthy because they're really grounded and even when we're doing like kicks, they're parallel to the ground. So it's like we're kind of ignoring the sky in a way because it's not about what's up there, it's about what we're walking on right now. One of the things that surprised me is just the, the beauty of the music and how then the dancers are able to um, work with the music. It's just really striking. Going back to where I started Going back to where I'm from Gonna pack these old dreams up Oh, I'm gonna run Oh, I'm gonna run And I ain't seen the sun shine Since God knows when just waiting for the spring to come To carry my burden To carry my 
burden. We were working towards a product that was going to be site specific in Terrace, Minnesota. We wanted to pre present this piece in the area that the story was written about. We had one of our performances in Terrace, Minnesota, which is where my grandparents on my dad's side were born and passed away. It was such a cool experience that I probably will treasure for the rest of my life, bringing my friends to where I live. And my mom started crying, and she's like, oh, it just gave me such inspiration. And um, my dad, and who's a farmer, and his cousin, who's all farmer, they brought their family, and they just couldn't believe that juniors and seniors were able to have all this inspiration and um, artistic expression we wanted to pour out into this short story. When we were out there, the weather was horrible. It was really cold, super windy, but you have to basically ignore that. You have to give it everything you got. I think it made it 10 times better because knowing how we're on a hill and there's wind and raining and cold, but we're out there dancing our hearts out, and I think that's what is the best. A lot of people were really moved by it because they live there, so they know what it's like. And us, not really knowing what it's like, but embodying what it would be like in that time period and showing them, they kind of got it. So then right away, it brought tears to like a lot of people's faces. I think that the students learned that anything is the takeoff point for the creative process that you have to research. I think they learned about refinement and revision. I think they learned that collaboration, while hard, is really worthwhile. I think that they live it. When they're actually performing it, the kids are living it. And as an audience member, to watch young people take this on and own it is um, it's really emotional. It's very powerful. I've never really been to a farm before and I don't know what it's like. So as a person who's like mainly in the city, you kind of get to see how other people think when we dance the pieces. I feel really spiritual actually because it's not like you're praising like a God like high up. It's more like you're praising like Mother Earth and like all that she's giving you because it's gravestones of wheat. Dig holes in my eyes and bury seeds in my pupils. Choke my lips to the brim with dirt. And I want you to plant a tree between my shoulder blades. It's almost like they're ghosts. They're ghosts coming back. And you can see generations and generations in this performance.